In this lecture, we take a look at error formulas for some of the numerical integration techniques that we often encounter in elementary mathematics courses, such as first-year calculus. We confine the lecture to what are called the Newton-Coates integration formulas, the first of which will be the trapezoidal rule. We will tackle three of these Newton-Coates formulas, and this lecture on the error formula for the trapezoidal rule will be the first in a series of three lectures. In this series of lectures, we also tackle the error formulas for the midpoint rule and Simpson's one-third rule, or what is often plainly called as Simpson's rule. When we speak of numerical integration, we often speak of estimating the integral of a function f of x equals y over an interval from, say, x equals a to x equals b. In the case that f is continuous and non-negative, we often interpret this integral to be equal to the area between the graph of f and the interval from a to b. For the trapezoidal rule, we often subdivide the interval from a to b into n subintervals. For this lecture, we will use n equal subintervals, or a uniform partition of the interval. We designate the left endpoint a to be equal to x sub 0. X sub 0 is followed by the partition points x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and just for the sake of illustration, we will use four subintervals, or n equals 4, in which case x sub n equals x sub 4 equals b. In the case when the integral does represent the area between the graph of f and the interval a, b, we estimate the area underneath the graph of f over each subinterval. As the name of the rule suggests, we use trapezoids, one over each subinterval, to estimate the area over each subinterval. We will use only the first subinterval to derive the error formula. Then we will use the error formula for the first subinterval for the bound of the error for the entire interval from A to B. The top side of the trapezoid is the secant segment connecting the points at x sub 0 and x sub 1. The secant line through x sub 0 and x sub 1 corresponds to the Lagrange polynomial function through x sub 0 and x sub 1. We call this Lagrange polynomial function as capital L of x. Using capital L of x as an approximation for f of x, f of x can be written as capital L of x plus an error term which we call E of x. One can easily find a formulation for the linear function capital L of x and check that it is equal to y sub 0 plus the slope of the secant line, which is y sub 1 minus y sub 0, divided by x sub 1 minus x sub 0, and this we multiply to x minus x sub 0. The formula for e of x for the linear function capital L of x is well known. It is given by the formula f double prime of c star divided by 2 factorial times the quantity x minus x sub 0 times the quantity x minus x sub 1. Here, c star is some value within the interval from x sub 0 to x sub 1. Integrating both sides with respect to x from x sub 0 to x sub 1. The integral of L of x from x sub 0 to x sub 1 gives us the well-known trapezoid formula. If h is equal to the width of the trapezoid, in this case h is equal to x sub 1 minus x sub 0, then the area of the trapezoid is equal to half of h times the sum of the two heights which is y sub 0 plus y sub 1. As an exercise, try integrating the expression inside the box to see that one does indeed get the area of the trapezoid. To complete the right side, we have the integral of e of x. At this point, we wish to define a new error function. This new error function will be different from e of x. Capital E of x is the error when using the Lagrange polynomial when approximating f of x. The new error function will be the error function when approximating the integral of f using the area of the trapezoid. And so the error function is the extra term on the right side of the equation, which is the integral of E of x from x sub 0 to x sub 1. Since this is the error in approximating the integral of f over the first subinterval, we call this error 
error sub 1. Very often, we will not be able to find the exact value of error sub 1. And so what we will aim to do in this lecture is to find an upper bound for this error sub 1. That is, how bad can error sub 1 get? And hopefully, that will tell us how bad or how good the trapezoidal rule approximation is. We will search for an upper bound for the absolute value of error sub 1. Bringing the absolute value inside the integral produces a quantity that is at least as big as the original quantity. And so the absolute value of error sub 1 is less than or equal to the integral from x sub 0 to x sub 1 of the product of the absolute values of the individual factors inside the integral. And so we have inside the integral the absolute value of f double prime of c star divided by 2 factorial times the absolute value of the product of x minus x sub 0 and x minus x sub 1. We will keep these two factors inside the same absolute value. We cannot put a fix on c star because it depends on x, and x varies on the interval from x sub 0 to x sub 1. So instead of the absolute value of f double prime of c star, we use the maximum absolute value of f double prime on the interval. This will produce an integral which is at least as big, and so will give us an upper bound for the absolute value of error sub 1. The maximum of the absolute value of f double prime is just one value, and therefore this fraction is a constant that we can take out of the integral. One can easily check as an exercise that if x is between x sub 0 and x sub 1, this product will be less than or equal to 0. And so the integral of the absolute value of the product of x minus x sub 0 and x minus x sub 1 is the same as minus the integral of the product of x minus x sub 0 times x minus x sub 1, without the absolute value. Using the fact that x sub 1 is equal to x sub 0 plus h, this integral, as an easy exercise, can be found to be equal to minus h cubed divided by 6. Therefore, the absolute value of error sub 1 is less than or equal to the maximum of the absolute value of f double prime times the cube of h, all over 12. We now obtain an error bound for the integral of f over the entire interval from a to b, using the error bound for the first subinterval. The absolute value of the total error when approximating the integral of f from a to b using the trapezoidal rule will then be less than or equal to the sum of the error bounds for all the intervals. Each of these errors uses the maximum absolute value of f double prime within its respective subinterval. We define capital K to be the largest of the maxes of the absolute value of f double prime on the different subintervals. It should be easy to see that this capital K is actually the max of the absolute value of f double prime on the entire interval from A to B. With capital K defined as such, each of the terms on the right side of the inequality should be less than or equal to K times h cubed all over 12. And so the absolute value of the total error should be less than or equal to k times h cubed all over 12 times n, since there are n terms on the right side of the inequality. We multiply the right side of the inequality by n squared over n squared, which is equal to 1, and then take advantage of the fact that h is equal to b minus a all over n, or that h times n is equal to b minus a. And so h cubed times n cubed is equal to the cube of b minus a. And finally, 
the absolute value of the total error, which is equal to the absolute value of the integral of f from a to b, minus the approximation using the trapezoidal rule with n equal subintervals, which we denote by capital T sub n, is less than or equal to k times the cube of b minus a, all over 12n squared.